Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Azimuddin and Dr. Raima Kalimi for giving me the, this opportunity to talk uh, in front of such a huge audience. Um, please forgive me if I get a bit nervous in the presence of my boss. My boss just arrived at <laughs> the moment it was my, my talk. So today, I'll talk about physical principles and parameters of opacity. So I'll give you a glimpse that uh, so uh, procuring a opacity is a huge investment. So one should know about the parameters which, are, uh, which the procuring agency should look, should sneak into before opting for a scanner. So this is my disclaimer. I may not be able to uh, deliver the uh, true essence of a fact. May you, may you uh, feel so. Please uh, go through these references. These are the basis which I have collected the data to present, to prepare my presentation. So before starting, I'll just give you a, a brief introduction of the organization. Uh, I'm employed by Patients Aid Foundation. Patients Aid Foundation is a non-governmental organization. Started its journey from blood bank with ambition to improve healthcare services in Jinnah Post Medical Center, Karachi uh, in 1991. Since then, it has transformed JPMC in terms of human resource development together with induction of cutting edge technology to cater to underprivileged with quality healthcare. Patients Aid Found Foundation keeping the Keeping the motto, uh, established first free of charge cyber knife radio surgery facility of the country in 2012, and later installed second unit in 2018, and further extended its scope by installing state of the art ready Zag X10 tomotherapy in 2020, making cyber knife and tomotherapy center JPMC only free of charge facility in the world. PEF has also PEF City Cyclotron facility, which is the only center in country offering free of charge facility, irrespective of referring, referring institution and financial status of. Uh, patient. These are some of the images of these TOG facilities, uh, CyberKnife Robotic Radio Surgery, Radius X9 Tromotherapy, and PET CT. So this is the index which I'll talk about the introduction to PET CT, radio pharmaceutical production, basic working principle of PET CT, and then components of, of a PET CT scanner and the technical parameters. So Pacity, uh, the demand of Pacity has extensively grown in recent years because the uh, capability of this scanner to provide uh, uh, physiological and metabolic data. So this imaging modality adds an essential dimension that is metabolic and physiological status, which comes from PET, of a tissue which may be normal or abnormal, other than anatomic information which comes from CT and MRI. So the metabolic status of a normal tissue or an abnormal tissue has a significant implication on deciding the management of the disease. So with the development of total body PET-CT scanners and extended field of view PET-CT scanners and their enhanced sensitivity and timing resolution, clinicians can now sneak into real-time distribution and flow analysis of radiopharmaceuticals. So let me show you some of the images, then we will go, go forward and, and try to make an equipment capable of doing all this. So this is the scan of a patient injected with 5.3 millicuries of FDG. First image is acquired at 1.5 hours after injection. And the last image is acquired after 12 hours post injection. You can compare the sensitivity of this equipment, how the technology has advanced. Means even after, uh, after 12 uh, hours, the activity at that time in the bloodstream of the patient would be 0.1 millicuries. So let's go ahead. So this is another scan. This scan is done by a radio, trace, a radio pharmaceutical that is zirconium based. Zirconium has a half life of three days. So first scan, first image is on day zero at the time of injection with the injection injected activity of 1.1 millicurie. And just look at the last image acquired on the 30th day after 10 half lives when the um, retained activity by the body is 0 0.001 millicuries. So this, this is how technology has grown. So let me show you another example, what we can do and what the world is right now doing. This is a dynamic path city. Just look at the tracer distribution, time activity curve of every organ. You have gray matter, iota, lungs, myocardium, liver, spleen, kidneys, and bladder. Each of the organ, has a different time activity curve or uptake pattern. So if a normal tissue 
has that much versatility in terms of uptake pattern. What about abnormal tissues? So there should be a system having capability of sneaking into the time uh, when we injected the tracer up to its maximum activity pattern. So here's the next slide. These are different phases when the images were acquired from 45 seconds after injection of the activity up to 60 minutes. So right now we are at the, at the last phase. We usually acquire after 60 minutes. We lose all the data post-injection from 45 seconds till 55 minutes. So rid of pharmaceutical production, let's start the journey to make up a system. So we start with fluoride 18, which is cyclotron uh, uh, based uh, radionuclide, a positron emitter. So once you are able to produce fluoride 18, if you have a synthesis module, you can produce all the listed pharmaceuticals which are meant for different purposes. Fluoride 18 in general oncology, PSMA for prostate, sodium fluoride for bony deposits, choline again for prostate induced, uh, CA prostate based metastatic nodules, DOPA is for um, uh, means um, um, for neuroimaging, FES for uh, CA breast, FET for uh, brain pathologies. So what are the clinical indications of PET-CT? Post-development of PET-CT, it was predominantly indicated for evaluation of cancer, but now due to development of tissue-specific radiopharmaceuticals, as I have, I have already shown you, the scope has gained vastness, including functional disorders and inflammatory, inflammatory disorders. Further to, to that, it had led to development of radionuclide-based treatment of cancer, that is theranostics. These are some of the images of, of epileptic foci. On the, on the left side, done by FDG, uh, PET-CT. And on the right side, done at our center for cardiac sarcoidosis, fused, uh, PET data fused on cardiac MR. So what is the basic, basic principle of a PET-CT? You inject a positron emitter uh, radio pharmaceutical, let the radio pharmaceutical distribute throughout the body, we call it uptake time. Then the uh, radio pharmaceutical which you have injected is a, uh, the radionuclide which has been bounded is a positron emitter. So that positron interacts with a free electron in the body and emits two annihilation photons, 511 keV each. And then our scanner detects those positrons for uh, the processing of image. This is the workflow diagram, how a PET-CT works. On the left is a CT combined with a, with a PET. You acquire CT first, which has to go down sampling, energy scaling, resolution match, and then forward projection. Over there, your attenuation map is ready. Once you acquire the PET, pre-attenuation corrected data, and you can see the uh, ACFs. Here, the CT data is fed into the PET data for attenuation correction, and finally, the images are displayed, uh, fused images are displayed. So let's sneak into the components of PET-CT scanner. Number one is the detector crystal. So detector crystal is the most important thing in a PET-CT scanner because it will decide the, its, its composition and dimensions of the crystal will decide its sensitivity, spatial resolution, and the timing resolution of the scanner. Just for an example, there are two uh, crystals available in the market. Which, uh, which are used in PET-CT, a BGO and LYSO. Just let me fuse. So this is the um, photon yield, light yield. Once a positron, uh, a gamma photon interacts with the crystal, if it is a BGO crystal, it gives you 9,000 photons, visible light photons. And after 300 nanoseconds, it will again be ready to acquire more. And here is LYSO, lyso-based crystal. It will give you, after interacting with a gamma photon, it will give you 32,000 visible light photons. And again, after 40, just after 40 nanoseconds, it is again ready to reacquire. So just, if you have a BGO crystal-based PET-CD scanner, if you compare the doses injected uh, on a LISO crystal-based PET-CD scanner and a BGO crystal-based uh, PET-CD scanner. You, you need three times more radio, uh, radio uh, pharmaceutical dose on a BGO crystal compared to a LISO crystal. Now let's come to the time of flight. So time of flight, 
is not just to acquire. You have to be sure where, the, where the, uh, that uh, uh, phenomena has happened. So th the capability of a scanner to resolve this dilemma is uh, that where the event has happened is the time of flight. So on the, on the left are a few examples. One event happened here. One of the photon is detected over there and the other on the opposite side. This is the time of arrival differences between two photons. Again, another site, this is the time arrival difference. Another photon, this is the time arrival difference. So now, what, is, what are the consequences of time of flight? So if timing resolution of a scanner is, let's suppose, 220 picosecond, it corresponds to a correct a positional uncertainty of an annihilation event of approximately 3.3 centimeters. You know, 3.3, so your algorithm, the scanning algorithm, has to find out that event in about 3.3 centimeters which corresponds to a sensitivity gain of about 9. So let's, what about your PCD scanner has a timing resolution of 25 picoseconds. So uncertainty drops down to 3.5 millimeters and a sensitivity gain of 80. So here is an example. A non-time of flight PCD. Here are three sources, one, two, three. So this scanner has to find out the origin of any annihilation event throughout the line of response. If you have a PCD scanner having a time of flight of 220 picoseconds, it contracts. 225 picoseconds, you are precise. So right now in the industry, the minimum time of flight which any manufacturer has, manufacturer has gained is 196 picoseconds. So these are for so once uh, a photon has interacted with a detector, it will convert uh, that gamma photon into visible light. That visible light has to be uh, processed further, either through photomultiplier tube or a silicon photomultiplier tube-based chip. So this is a photomultiplier tube, how it looks like. Incidence, incident gamma ray, conversion of gamma ray into visible light, and then the amplification of the signal. Just look at this, how precise it is, SIPM. This is the light shield crystal and just this one. This is the chip which will receive the photons compared to this whole length PMT. So another thing is axial FOV. You know, uh, besides acquiring a PET-CT, production of radio pharmaceutical and its consumption has uh, poses a uh, poses greater demand. So, if you have a smaller FOV capacity, it will need more time to acquire one patient. If you have extended FOV capacity, it will shorten the time. Yet again, it will reduce the uh, the amount of radio pharmaceutical inject, injected radio pharmaceutical as well. Just for comparison, this is a capacity for suppose having a axial FOV of 20 centimeter you have to acquire from, from the vault of the skull to mid-thigh. It has to acquire for eight times. And look at this. For suppose if a PET-CT has an axial FOV of 30 centimeter, that will acquire for three times. Two, four, six minutes. Two, four, six, about 18 minutes. You will acquire, so patient will remain in the PET-CT for 18 minutes versus for eight minutes. So some technical parameters. Acquisition duration, also called the bed time, it depends on injected activity, axial FOV of the scanner, and BMI of the patient. A lower bed time compromises signal to noise ratio and may lead to false interpretation. Here you have the example, this is baseline, acquired for 120 seconds, for 90 seconds, 60 seconds, 45 seconds, and 30 seconds. Just compare the SNR between these two. And there is a study you can see a patient acquired for a lymph node in retroperitoneum, acquired for 30 seconds per bed, the stage was 2. And acquired for 120 seconds per bed, it tends to be 3. And again, a media channel node, acquired for 30 seconds, stage 2. Acquired for 120 seconds, stage 3. The whole management changes, actually. So, 
Injected activity is the next. This is the most important aspect in molecular imaging, which if a technologist is usually uh, doing PET CT, he has to take care of everything. Amount of activity injected, the time when he has injected the activity, residual activity, he has to consider all these things because a minimum, minimum time difference or miscalculation of the activity can lead to disaster. Just an example, so if timing mismatch, just a two minute mismatch of the time of injection, means it was, uh, no, means uh, 2.20 p.m. When you injected the patient, you actually wrote 2.42 p.m. There, is a, there will be a SUV mismatch of 1.3%. And if it is 15 minutes, the SUV mismatch would be 9.5%. That is a huge difference. So yet again, so uptake time based on timings, based on the time of injection, you actually decide uh, the uptake time for 40 minutes, for 50 minutes or 60 minutes. So if your uh, uh, time of injection is not accurate, so uptake time for 40 minutes, uptake time for 50 minutes. Same injected activity, look at the SUVs. One is 13.1, one is 14.9. So next is scanning algorithms. So with the time, we are developing some great algorithms and with the implication of AI, we are applying really good algorithms to reduce the scanning time without compromising on signal to noise ratio. So right now we have OSHAM point spread function and absolutely time of flight. These algorithms aid overcome positional uncertainty of an event, development application of different algorithms, reduce processing time and better SNR. Just give, an, give you an example. This is just OSHAM. Look at the SNR. It is 5.08. Look at OSHAM, point spread function and time of flight. Look at the SNR, 5.99. So as drastically, uh, SNR has gone better without compromising on scanning time, injected activity, and the FOE. So let me show you an example of two reconstruction uh, techniques. The left one is an AI-based reconstruction. Look at the smoothness, how this image looks. And the next one is ordinary, awesome, a bit grainy. And I hope with the time, this is, the, this is, the, uh, this is what we will be doing, inshallah. So right from 15 seconds up to two minutes. Within two minutes, you will be able to do a single pass CT with the dynamic imaging. Thank you so much.